In today's environment, sustainability is imperative for all building projects. One of the most important aspects of sustainable design is energy efficiency, a drive to reduce the amount of energy a building consumes during its lifespan. The main decisions influencing a building sustainability features are made by architects often at the start of the project. What's up guys, welcome back to our channel. Today's video is sponsored by Green Building Addresses, uh, the firm called Ihome. They provide resources of sustainable housing. I'll leave the link and their contacts on the description for you guys to uh, check them out. Uh, without further ado, let's get started. Today I'll be demonstrating Akiket sustainability features and design process as well as utilizing Akiket's eco-designer to work our way around energy efficiency in the design. Basically this is the design I'll be focusing on and then I'll be using the uh, beam energy evaluation tool, the eco-designer. Akiket energy evaluation tool allows you to create a detailed report that will be uh, like be able to extract from uh, from the end of the project but basically this video provides an overview of how to create or this report how to set up your project for and then you create the report so things will be covering things like how to set up your project for energy analysis the model and then an overview of how to import data that will enrich the report uh, the data that you'll be importing in the elements in our geometrical and structural informations i will covering uh, attributes and composites and building materials and stuff like that as well as uh, and then we tap more into the evaluation tool itself and how to work our way around it and the information of the building systems and energy sources so stay tuned and follow suit all right, uh, first thing first, I'll start by introducing you guys to the project and the passive design methods incorporated in this eco home as recommended by our green building consultants. So principles of sustainable design that are incorporated, I wanted to match them with the Akiket workflow as well. But first things first, I had to come up with the plan. The plan I wanted to make it smaller because a small house uses less material to construct. It also uses less heating and air conditioning. So basically that's uh, number one philosophy, one number one principle of eco house. It shouldn't be big. And then effective layout plan, uh, which was only to improve indoor environmental quality and you know more of cross ventilation. You know, natural ventilation relies on non-mechanical means to provide air movement. So we wanted to reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions and improve indoor air quality through this uh, cross ventilation and openings of windows and doors just to improve you know uh, and uh, contribute to the ten tenant's certification satisfaction and well-being of the house so that's basically it that's number two and as well as uh, I wanted to I wanted to, to to improve indoor by a good layout and you know I was considering the internal noise levels as well when I was planning this. Uh, I wanted to design like uh, rooms that are buildings that are designed to maintain internal noise levels and at an appropriate level and that's basically a good layout like the rooms bedrooms were at the back and the communal the kitchens and dining were at the front so that's another thing that you need to bear in mind when designing another feature i wanted to consider or i considered was orientation like carefully orientating my building uh, that's basically good architecture in its simplest form. You know, uh, good orientation increases the energy efficiency of the building. So I wanted to uh, take advantage of the sun in the winter 
and then shield it on the sum shield the building from the uh, summer you know and then shield it in the summer and take advantage of cooling breezes by ways of uh, cross ventilation as well as like as I already mentioned so that's basically uh, an kit you could that's where you place your north that's where you you know not signs and stuff like that so I wanted to maximize daylighting as well and natural ventilation uh, this is why if as, as you look at my design like it's um, uh, the windows are much bigger on this side and then that's basically the orientation side and then the natural ven ventilation as well I wanted to play around with the natural ventilation as you look at my roof eaves and overhangs that's uh, this, this, this was designed specifically to act as a you know shielding device as well like sh shielding my windows in a way i wanted to have uh, at least 600 800 overhang so that uh, you know i could shield my building and my openings uh, in a way as well as uh, collect water that's now we are moving on to another principle of uh, rainwater collection uh, so we wanted to it's basically uh, harvesting and I was collecting water from the building roof through this uh, designs of the roof and, and I installed um, down pipes um, and to storage tanks which can then be used this water you collect can be used for irrigation purposes and may also be reticulated to toilets, shed, shed says things in, within the building. So I was collecting, you know, just uh, when I design a gutter and then the, the MEPs that, uh, you know. Uh, I have, in, in that note, I have a, we have a MEP design course uh, that is running i'll leave the link on the description for you guys to download and yeah just tap into mp design so just showing you guys how to uh how this roof and how the rainwater collection works around i think by now you have uh familiar you've got you've gotten to familiarize yourself with my design so uh, you've noticed the uh, photovoltaic Baltic panels that I have, the solar panels that I've installed in the roof. And again, this roof serves the purpose of now um, becoming, um, you know, the support system for where, where I install my roof, my, my, my panels. So these panels, you know, they, they, they extract they emit, they store the sun energy, they produce electric power directly from the sun. Uh, this is a clean energy source which requires no fuel and produces no emissions. So I'm going to, uh, you know, heat and light up the house by using the solar panels in a way and that will reduce energy consumptions, you know. Uh, photovoltaic is the world's fastest growing energy production technology with some reports detailing production you know doubling every year and you can see now that Elon Musk is tapping into the solars as well solar you need to go solar so I wanted to emphasize that even if you could see my my drawing here I wanted to show you guys the collection of uh, how my solar how how the the electricity works around you know from the roof the northern side of the roof that's where i install my panels and then i have an event and ac circuit breakers and then batteries as well you know that's just basically it i wanted to emphasize another principle of passive design of going solar i think uh one of the last principle was principle of passive design is air sealing and insulation basically air tightness uh, it relates to the amount of air loss from a building 
and you know by building by a small gaps and building envelope so basically uh, here I was just showing you guys on how you could insulate your building uh, your materials you could insulate uh, your walls and your your roof slabs so basically in uh, a you use um, composites uh, you select a wall and then edit your composite and then you build and according to your standards you build your own composite your walls uh, thicknesses then you put insulation um, even in the roof that's what you do you select your materials and your insulation and make sure to choose the right insulation uh, research the environmental credentials of your insulation product and um, so basically the insulation reduce uh, base building operational energy and greenhouse gas emissions you know and it's very important it's very important uh, it's a game changer <laughs> and yeah that's basically it so in composites that uh, uh, we have a detailed course on how you know that's just been basics of working around with modeling you know, composites are you be able to uh, create clean uh, drawings checks and sections and you know so this materials are used to prevent the movement of heat from one space to another usually used to prevent heat losses in winter and heat gains in summer you know so the insulation can be found in uh, like i said in the walls and the ceiling and the roof and here i was emphasizing on the roof and uh, and then the walls as well uh, my old timbers just the timber wall so that was um basically how to set up your project how i managed to set up my project and to prepare for for energy uh, simulation um, we can now move ahead and go on to uh, the energy evaluation and settings and stuff like that so basically i think we, we covered this video uh, not so long ago uh, introducing you guys the eco designer but this is now a deep dive um, what we do now, uh, you make sure you have your labels, your zones, because you can't do an evaluation without zones. The zones, uh, the zones help uh, identify, you know, what what the you know the building is all about. Let's say in the room, in the bedroom, the zone will detect the materials in the bedroom. The zones will detect. Uh, materials and the structural elements in a kitchen openings in the kitchen so that's basically what you do by assigning thermal block properties now so what you do is uh, we create zones uh, by you go to the energy evolution model and then you assign thermal blocks by zoning so each thermal block you assign as a zone. Each thermal block you assign a zone. And yeah, that's basically this is an energy model. This is an energy model. Before you run the energy the eco designer simulation, what you need to do is prepare uh, by creating new thermal blocks. You know, you create a new thermal block at launch, uh, create a new thermal block of the dining, create a thermal block of uh, spaces that basically incorporate your house, all of the zones, like your space planning. You, you, bring, you bring your zones here. Then after you bring your zones here, you assign them to, uh, you know, you define them to, to, to you know, operational spaces of what this thermal blocks are because the inbuilt system the, uh, the 
through soft calculation engine will detect oh this is a bedroom oh, this is a residential this is you know so you're, you're basically coding this is basically coding now and then you assign via a zone you know like a, a dining you're going to assign it to a dining zone a bedroom you're going to assign it to a kitchen zone kitchen zone just like that kitchen zone kitchen zone bedroom one you select a kitchen zone so this is where now you're going to you're you're you're, you're informing your your design via energy like the materials you see when i proceed and then when you when you go to structures structures of the zone now this is what you see like the, the structures made up the structures that made up make up the, the launch you have this walls here and then this walls you can now edit now the, the u values of the walls you could edit the thermal uh, properties of the walls you could uh, you know thicknesses and u values as well uh, of, you now we have control because that's basically the, the the idea of working with thermal blocks with the zones so we now you have control of the um, the structures itself and assigning them the properties of the right u values and, and thermal com thermal conductivity and then when you go to the openings as well the openings the windows as well you have to have the right um, windows you have to uh you, here you are going to um, um, i'm using lower value low lower u value solar heat gain and coefficient windows so i, I you know i reduce the glare it's, it's, it's more energy saving um you know high performance glazing that's just get basically it so you open up um you open up uh, maybe just a um a google search the u values of windows u values of your properties and you punch in your u values that's just basically it that's just basically it that's before you run the eco designer uh, simulation you need to set up this thing you need to set up your heating like uh, you have the solar panels here you need to define that of your heating and, um, and you know the heating now at the end the waters and stuff with the solar so you need to code and let this uh, know what you're doing and the rooftops and stuff like that they need to know yeah you're just coding you're just coding yes um, the building systems and and your electricity sources i have solar and coal 50 50 yeah so basically it was just um this not a step by step guide guys you could go watch the video in the link description he was just showing you a step by step that I was following before i came up here to uh extract my report all right so this this is the report i have extracted um i had the key values i had, I had you know so inf such information is important if you want to submit to your star rating buildings if this is how you prepare your building uh if you want to you know to get create uh, to to get uh, greater control over your system individual features and participate in the energy certification this is what you need to prepare this is what you need to do this is mandatory this is uh so the key learnings of this video i uh, was just about uh, energy analysis and acquired and preparing and as well as sustainability principles i think uh, i've covered enough thank you for watching guys um check out ihome uh, green consultants um they are green consultants guys they will help you and if 
in your sustainability journey. Uh, check out our pages, check out our resources as well if you want to improve your workflows. Uh, our Patreon subscribers will have this file uh, for practice. And yeah, that's basically it. Thanks for the feedback as always, guys. Uh, you kept us inspired. This is why we keep on um, coming back with, with coming back with more videos like this. It's because of you guys. Um, uh, thank you, thank you guys. Uh, stay creative. Bye for now.